And Selection Sunday, the Big Ten tying its record set last year with nine teams in the dance. We'll take it through them, starting with Wisconsin, the third seed in the Midwest. They play Friday. They do get to play in Milwaukee, taking on the Red Raiders of Colgate, the Patriot champs. If they win that one, they will get either LSU, Team Turmoil right now, or Iowa State. As for Purdue, still end up getting a third seed in the East. They also head to Milwaukee to take on the Ivy League champs in Yale. A win there would give them either Texas or the ACC tournament champion in Virginia Tech. Illinois is the four seed in the South. The Fighting Illini will play Friday against Chattanooga in Pittsburgh. If they win that game, they will take on either Houston or UAB. So the Big Ten regular season champs are a four seed. Iowa ends up as a five seed in the Midwest. They will take on the Spiders of Richmond who played their way in this weekend. That game will be Thursday in Buffalo, New York. A win there and they get either Providence or South Dakota State. So fellas, that's kind of the, the top of the Big Ten. What stands out from what you see there? Purdue stands out to me. I mean, this is a team that I think is one of the most talented teams in all the field. Somewhat of a disappointing season. Can they bring a chip on their shoulder to the NCAA tournament? And I'm looking ahead. You know, I'm not a player anymore. I'm not a coach. I can look ahead. I'm looking ahead to this matchup against Kentucky. You talk about the bigs going against Oscar Shibwe, one of the best bigs in the country, uh, with, with Edie and Trevion Williams. And then at the guards, uh, Kentucky, Ty Ty Washington, Severe Wheeler, really good from the guards. Jaden Ivey going at them, wanting to show he's one of the best players. So I'm really looking forward to Purdue. And I'm looking at this Illinois team. It's going to be hard to scout Illinois in the NCAA tournament because no one's really seen them at their full strength. But their guard play has been incredible. I mean, you look at their first game against Chattanooga. Chattanooga's biggest, biggest guy that they give major minutes to is 6'9". There's no way he's seen something like a Kofi Coburn in that league. So I look forward to Kofi Coburn dominating that matchup. Then you fast forward to maybe Houston. It's a more guard-dominated offense. I really like Trent Frazier, DeMonte Williams as defenders on the perimeter. They always give you a chance. And then I know I'm looking very ahead, but that Arizona rematch will be big time. I don't like this five-second rule how... If you're not dribbling, they call it. If you're dribbling, they don't call it. Illinois lost on the five-second count that first game. Great game. It should be a big one. Yeah, Illinois, of course, had hoped to be in Chicago, and I think it became apparent kind of along the way here that that probably wasn't going to work out for them. So San Antonio, for them, they're starting Pittsburgh, but were they to advance, they'd end up in San Antonio. So the Fighting Illini, again, do get a four seed. Uh, Let's run you through the rest of the Big Ten and their matchups, and we start – with the Ohio State Buckeyes. They are a seven seed in the South. They will play Friday in Pittsburgh, and they get Loyola of Chicago. And all you need to do is ask Illinois from last year what the Ramblers are capable of. A win there would likely put the Buckeyes up against Villanova. So definitely a challenging road for Ohio State. Michigan State, a seven seed. Remember, they made the Final Four as a seven in 2015. They are in the West. They will take on Davidson in Greenville, South Carolina on Friday. And a win there would likely give us Tom Izzo against Coach K. As for the Michigan Wolverines, an 11 seed in the South. So they managed to avoid the first four. They get David Roddy, the outstanding star for Colorado State. That game is Thursday. They get to play in Indy as well, so close to home. A win there gets them a date with either Tennessee or Longwood. Two Big Ten teams are in the first four. That includes Indiana, the 12 seed in the East. They will play Tuesday in Dayton against Wyoming. If they win that game, they got to go out to Portland, Oregon to take on UCLA. They were the next to last team into the field and how about this reaction from Rutgers there was so much uncertainty about this team despite all the high profile wins this year they were the third to last team into the field an 11 seed in the west they get Notre Dame in the first four the Irish tied for second in the ACC in the regular season what was a down year for that league you win that one and you take on Alabama on Friday in San Diego. So the Big Ten again, nine teams in. I mentioned a moment ago, it bears repeating. 
Most ties for the most the Big Ten has ever had. It's also the most teams ever sent to the tourney by a 14 team league. Remember, there was one year where the Big East had 16 teams, got 11 in. But the Big Ten these last two years with nine in and a 14 team league is the best any 14 team league has ever done. Uh, guys, take away from uh, what we saw there, the rest of that group. Well, I'm looking at Indiana. This is a team that I thought was just supercharged here in Indianapolis the last few days. And in particular, the Stars playing like stars. TJD maybe had the best three-game stretch of his career. Xavier Johnson, he's turned into one of the best guards in all the, the country in recent weeks. I've been really pleased by him. And I think, too, they go up against Wyoming. Graham Ike, he's a 20-10 and 10 guy. It's going to be a great matchup inside with TJD. But if they can get a win, similar to Rutgers, I love the momentum that you can get by playing in that first four. Of course, you want to avoid it, but I like their chances if they can get a win in that first game. And I, I'm looking at Rutgers, still on the Andy Katz bus. It's rolling right now. <laughs> and if you're Coach Peichel, you've got to be excited for one reason. You've been two Indiana teams already this year on buzzer beaters. You may get another one against Notre Dame. But the matchup I'm looking at at this game is someone I know personally, Blake Wesley. He's a tremendous freshman from Notre Dame. He can score the ball in bunches. He can get going. But Caleb McConnell, the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten, had to guard amazing players all season long, so he won't be shocked. That would be a big-time matchup. If Rutgers can defend like we know they can and make shots like they did in that stretch, they were 40% plus from the three-point line. They could win this one and have a fun march. Interesting to think about it in hindsight, right? So Indiana barely gets in. Obviously, they needed that win over Illinois, guys. We were thinking maybe the Michigan game would have been enough. Seems like it probably would not have been, whereas Rutgers obviously didn't win a game in the Big Ten tourney. They clearly had done enough, and I think their seeding, allowing them to avoid the possibility of a bad loss, really helped Rutgers because that was the one thing they clearly could not have afforded. Redemption indeed, and now we'll see whether Iowa can carry that forward in the NCAA tournament. They haven't made it out of the first weekend, remember, since making the Sweet 16 in 1999. They get the Spiders coming up on Thursday, and were they to win there? Likely Providence, although perhaps South Dakota State. So let's break down this Iowa team a little bit, Trent, and clearly the hottest team down the stretch here. They were outstanding at the end of the regular season. And they continued their great play in Indy. What stands out as you look at Iowa and the draw? Yeah, they, they continued their great play. It wasn't, they didn't just get hot. They're 12 and 2 in their last yep. 14 games. Keegan Murray just didn't emerge. He's been scoring 20 plus the entire season at a high, high rate. I love this team. You heard Fran talk, Coach McCaffrey talk a little bit about confidence. It seems like everybody that steps on the court is extremely confident. I mean, even Riley Mulvey shooting a three in the game today. But I love the emergence of Tony Perkins, how he's playing. Peyton Sanford comes in the game. Everybody is a factor. Everybody plays to their strengths. And then you have Keegan Murray, who's typically the best player on the floor. I like their draw because they avoided what number one seeds, Arizona and Gonzaga. They have the best, the most size, the best bigs. If there's anything Iowa can struggle with, it's size. They avoided them. I really like how this is shaping up for them. They're in the Chicago region. I think they can go to the Final Four. And I like what you said at the end. They avoid size. And when you because we look at this Iowa team, they are 21-0 when they out-rebound their opponents. So if they're not worried about that size, they're going to have a fine time rebounding the basketball. They forced 17 turnovers today against Purdue. They can bring that same exact type of defense, that pressure defense with Tony Perkins now in the lineup into the tournament. And they play at a pace that you really can't match. They play at such a high rate so fast, but they don't turn the ball over. Only six turnovers today. They're taking care of it. They know where it should go, but you hit it on the head. You have a guy like Tony Perkins who can come into a game and affect it in a lot of ways. Yesterday, it was Patrick McCaffrey. Took over the second half, 12 points in that half, helped them win that game. Today it was Sanford being that guy in that third row position. Comes off the bench, goes four for four, 10 points. And all of this is even not even mentioned. Jordan Bohannon, who leads the Big Ten in three-pointers made. A lot of weapons. This team is hot. Chris Murray off of the bench. I like their matchup against Perkins because I like – I mean against, against Providence because I like Perkins as a defender. I, I really like the way I was playing. They are a tough matchup. I'm with you guys in terms of uh, the fact they might get to play in Chicago. That's huge. I mean, can you imagine yeah. what the United Center would look like <laughs> if Iowa were playing for a berth in the Final Four in Chicago? Would be uh, off the hook, no question. So a lot of things working in Iowa's favor, most notably the fact that they are really playing well here down the stretch. Uh, Purdue, let's look at their matchups. You see for the Boilermakers again, the three seed in the East. They do get the chance to go to Milwaukee, so reasonably close. Obviously, they would have loved to have been in Indy. 
Let's get more on Purdue and its draw. Head coach Matt Painter with Andy Katz. Well, Matt, you're a three seed in Milwaukee taking on Yale. What's your reaction to the bracket? Well, obviously, you know, every year you're able to get in the tournament. It's an honor to get in the tournament. And anybody you're going to play has earned their way into it. So you're going to play good teams. Obviously, last year we played a really good team in North Texas. You know, the numbers don't matter. Yale is a really good team. They've earned their way in there. Coach Jones is a great coach, has done an excellent job there, and so they have experience and they're tough. We actually just were watching it. It's kind of funny that like what you're watching while you're preparing for a game, they're on the screen, and they're a very well coached and a very good team, and so we know we're going to have our hands full. Yeah, they knocked off Princeton to win the Ivy on Sunday before your game. Uh, to be a little bit better, I mean, it's not Iowa, but to be a little bit better after the way you played Sunday, what do you need to change before this matchup? Just not turn the ball over. You know, that's been, I, I told our guys after the game, it's our 80-20. You would rather your 80 be positive, and, and that's what it's been. You know, but that 20%, when we turn the basketball over, we beat ourselves, and today that's what we did, and we got to do a better job in the NCAA tournament with that. You know, against Penn State, against Michigan State, we took care of the basketball. And at the end of the day, I know it's not the only element of the game, but for us, when we take care of the basketball, good things happen. And real quick, Matt, nine. Nine Big Ten teams make the NCAA tournament. What's your reaction to that? I think it's great. You know, obviously, you got a 14 team league. Um, you grind it out, you kind of beat each other up, but every league does that. But I think our, our league has done a really good job of scheduling non conference. We've really challenged ourselves. I think other leagues are doing the same thing, but for us to get nine in is great. Thanks, Matt. Good luck. All right, thank you. Fifth straight year is a top four seed for Matt Painter's team. That is the longest streak in school history. Ray Fell, this loss aside, what do you make of the Boilers as they head into the March run? I agree with Coach Painter. You got to take care of the basketball. 17 turnovers in the, in the game in March is too many. It's too many in any month in college basketball. You're not going to win any many games where you have 17 turnovers, shoot the ball 25% from three. They've got to shore that up. Purdue can't beat Purdue in March Madness. So you think about the way they started the season. Didn't get a Big Ten regular season championship. Didn't get a conference champion, tournament championship. They have a time right now to get to that Final Four. I like their matchup against Oscar Shibwe with Trayvon Williams, Zach Eady kind of wearing him down. Now's the time for to show up, I think it's two things. You got to play with an edge, and then Jay Nivey's got to be that All American. He's got to be that leader. He's got to take over. He has the ability. Let's see if he can do it. He needs to heal up that tailbone. Man, he took yeah. a couple bad spills yeah. here over the last couple of days. Remember, Purdue hasn't made the Final Four since 1980. They were a whisker away just a few years ago, that crazy game against Virginia. Perhaps this is the year. What's that? It's the scene when the Illinois Fighting Illini found out they were a four seed in the South, taking on the mocks of Chattanooga, a team that won both the regular season and the conference tourney in the Southern Conference. Here you see the bracket for the Fighting Illini, a win there, and they would likely meet up with Kelvin Sampson and Houston, although UAB certainly a pretty solid team as well. Again, headed to Pittsburgh. Here's what Brad Underwood had to say about the draw. Yeah, you know, I'm not as worried about where we play. Uh, you know, that, that becomes something you obviously want your fans there, and and uh, Pittsburgh's not that far. Uh, but uh, you never know what's going in the mind of the committee and, and how they have to move people around. Uh, so, uh, you know, we get a great opponent. We get a, we get a conference champion. We get a team that's uh, won a bunch of games. Uh, we know they've got uh, really good players. They've got a very good coach. And, and uh, you know, they've had a lot of success. So uh, we'll dive into that as soon as we get done here and, and start looking into uh, – uh, everything that Chattanooga presents uh, for us, and uh, we'll go to work on that tomorrow. That very good coach, by the way, Lamont Paris, who used to be an assistant at Wisconsin. The Badgers are a three seed. They are taking on Colgate. Again, they get to go to Milwaukee, which is huge for Wisconsin, close to home for those first couple of games, a program that's won its opener in 11 of its last 13 NCAAs, made it to the Sweet 16 in four of its last six would need to beat the Red Raiders and then either LSU or Iowa State to get to another Sweet 16. Telly Hughes getting the reaction from Greg Gard. All right, Coach, you guys are heading back to the NCAA tournament in Milwaukee for the first time since 2014, but we know seedings and locations don't mean anything when it comes to the tournament, but it has to feel good to have your fan base behind you. Yeah, I mean, it's great for our fan base, great for, our, obviously, our alumni, former players, all of that, but as you know, all the bad teams got their toes in the sand right now, Telly. They're all out and on spring break. We're, we're going to face a really good Colgate team on Friday. 
What was it about this team that you saw early that you could set your sights on the success that you guys had this season? Uh, I think the number one thing was the togetherness that I saw developing back in the summer. And, and then as we worked through the summer and into the fall, I could tell we were, had some really talented individual pieces. It was just a matter of them continuing to come together and grow together. And then you learn through the experiences that you go through during a season. And they've done a phenomenal job. We got a piece of the Big Ten Championship and get to play again in March. And for the second time in three seasons, you were the Big Ten Coach of the Year. How have you been able to recruit guys that are going to not only buy to what you're selling, but also just come in and be a part of this Wisconsin culture? Well, uh, our staff does a great job of identifying those that can have success here on and off the court. And you want like-minded individuals that want to be part of something bigger than themselves. So, you know, these Coach of the Year awards are individual honors, but you, you don't do it, you don't have that happen if you don't have a really good team. So, fortunately, we've had, you know, a team of the year here the last couple of years. Coach, congratulations on the season and good luck in the NCAA tournament. All right. Thanks, Telly. Let's get some thoughts on both of those teams. And, Rafael, Wisconsin couldn't ask for a better path. I mean, Milwaukee and Chicago doesn't get much better than that. You know, the fans are going to travel well just an hour away from their arena, so they're going to be there loud and proud. But I'm looking at this Wisconsin team, and I'm looking at Stephen Crowell and Chris Vogt, especially if you're, looking, if you're looking really far ahead. You look to Auburn. You look about Walter Kessler, Jabari Smith. That Auburn's averaging eight blocks. If those two guys don't bring production inside the middle and be able to be a safety release valve, it's going to be a tough evening. Johnny Davis likes to drive the basketball, doesn't shoot a lot of three-pointers. Those guys at the rim are tough to score on. And I'm looking at the Illini. This is one of the more talented teams. they got to establish Kofi Coburn in the low post. Andre Corbell is always somewhat of a question mark. My concern, though, is they have trouble with big guards. Jalen Pickett uh, really kind of uh, picked on them. Malachi Brandon went for 31 on them. Chattanooga, Malachi Smith, 6'5", 200-pound guard, averaging 20 points on 50, 40, 80 shooting. Very efficient, good player. He could give them problems in how Illinois plays defense. You hope Illinois can get healthy, too, particularly Jacob Grandison. We were talking a lot about this in Indy, just the way that he helps them spread the floor. I know Brad Underwood was kind of trying to find a little bit of a silver lining in getting knocked out early, and he was suggesting that might be one of them. Just a little bit of time for this team to collect itself and maybe make a turning run. Thanks, fellas. Let's run through a few of these other matchups for the Big Ten teams. Michigan State gets Davidson. Interesting subplot there. One of the stars of that Davidson team is former Spartan Foster Lawyer, so he certainly will be familiar with Tom Izzo and company again. Perhaps a date with Coach K and Duke to follow. Here's what Izzo had to say about his team's draw. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. And uh, very deserving of being in when you don't win your conference championship and get in. It kind of tells you how good you really are. I am more worried about us than anybody. More or less, uh, it's, it's the things that I think we can do. Post better and continue the incredible job they've done not turning the ball over. And a pretty good job of shooting the ball uh, most of the games in the last four that we played. No Big Ten team has won more NCAA tourney games than Michigan State. What are they going to need to do to add to that total, Rafael? But they're going to have to be locked in on Foster Lawyer. Foster Lawyer actually lives in Fort Wayne, so I'm familiar with him. He's going to be juiced up, ready to score the basketball at a high level. Max Christie will have his hands full with a motivated guy. But then I'm looking at this Michigan State's point guard, Tyson Walker, bum ankle. Will he be ready? A.J. Hogarth also hurt his ankle, although he had 17 to 10 against Purdue. But you've got to get this Michigan State team back to just playing tough, Tom Izzo branded basketball. Like he said, do not turn the ball over, get out and run. And then I'm also, I'll be remiss. Coach K, first Tom Izzo, big time. How cool would that be? And Tom Izzo does not have a great track record, as we know, against Coach K. Not that there are many out there who do, but it would be a fascinating matchup to the absolute legends of college basketball going head to head. How about Ohio State? Again, a Loyola of Chicago in that first game. The Ramblers are really good. They, of course, uh, won the conference tourney of the Missouri Valley outstanding defensive team under Drew Valentine. What do you make of that matchup there, Trent, for Ohio State? Top 25 defense for the Ramblers. This team put a clinic on Illinois last year in the, in the round of 32. Lucas Williamson, fifth-year senior. He's played in the Final Four. He's played in the Sweet 16. They have great experience. Ohio State, we don't know about their health. Is Kyle Young healthy? There's a lot of question marks. I'd love to see them make a run. When you have E.J. Liddell, when you have Malachi Branham, you have the tools to do so. We'll see if they can put it together. 
really confident bunch in Loyola. They know that they can go toe-to-toe with these major conference teams. So it is challenging for Ohio State, particularly with as banged up as they've been. They'll look to make it out of the first weekend for the first time under Chris Holtman, see whether or not they can make that happen. Again, it has been challenging down the stretch here for Ohio State. Michigan into the NCAA tourney. The Wolverines are an 11 seed. They get a really good Colorado State team coached by Nico Medved, a guy who knows the Midwest quite a bit, former Drake head coach and Minnesota grad. If they win that one, it's either Tennessee or Longwood. Wolverine sweated it out a bit, a 548 win percentage, the lowest for an at-large team in 21 years, but they are in. Here's Elise Meneker with Juwan Howard. Coach, congratulations. In 11 seed, you'll be taking on Colorado State. Uh, first, just your reaction when you hear your name called. Well, I was extremely excited. Uh, I was excited for so many reasons, for our players and for the staff and support staff as well, for putting in all the hard work this year, uh, you know, being having a tough schedule uh, in the Big Ten, you know, and also a non-conference schedule, uh, just to see that you know, it was rewarded in, in the right way. In the right way, there was a chance that you were not even going to be in bubble team, a play-in game, but here you are in 11 seed. Just initial reactions. We were talking about that. You you said we deserve to be in this tournament. Yeah, uh, if you look at you know our strength of schedule and non-conference, Big Ten season, and then also the teams that we beat on the road at home, ranked teams, quad one wins. You know, I just felt just overall, you know that we should be a part of the NCAA tournament. And the selection committee felt the same way. And uh, just to hear the roars in the room of the guys getting excited about where we seated and who we're playing and where we're playing. But now it's all about business. It's now it's time for us to roll up our sleeves, uh, get ready to prepare for our opponent and look at it one game at a time. I was pretty confident. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty confident, you know, the past week, um, yesterday, coming to today. And then once they started reading the names, I, you know, I did get a little nervous because it's like, it's happening, like, you know, it's either your name gets called or it doesn't. But, you know, for us, um, you know, we feel like, you know, we did enough to where um, we earned the right to hear our name called. And fortunately for us, uh, it happened. Indiana in as well. The Hoosiers, the next to last team in to the NCAA tournament. That means they will head to Dayton for a date with Wyoming on Tuesday. Were they to manage to win that, they would take on St. Mary's. So definitely a challenging road. And then uh, UCLA perhaps or Akron ahead. But again, for Indiana, you end the stretch of four straight years without, four straight tourneys rather, without hearing their name called. So they are in and feeling good about what's ahead. Megan McEwen with head coach Mike Woodson. Coach, they always say you want to be playing your best basketball in March, and your team put together a great Big Ten tournament, making it all the way to the semifinal. Now you're in the big dance. Where would you say your team is right now in terms of playing their best basketball? Well, we're in a good place right now. I mean, we've been playing pretty well, and, uh, uh, you know, we drew Wyoming, you know, so then next up we got to go start preparing this evening for them and practice tomorrow and leave tomorrow and play Tuesday. I know it's a quick turnaround for you, but you have nine Big Ten teams make the NCAA tournament. How well has this league prepared you for a moment like this? Well, it's a tough league. It's been very competitive all season on everybody because anybody was capable of beating each other. But, you know, we just got to continue to believe, stay healthy, and get ready for Wyoming. Indiana is going to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2016, your first season here. Why is this team so special to do this with? Well, again, it's special because I'm new, and we put a group of guys together that are new, and these guys have been competitive all year, fighting to get to this point, and now we're here. Appreciate it, Coach. Best of luck. All right, thank you. And finally, how about Rutgers, the third to last team in. So they have to go to the first four as well. They will take on Notre Dame and then a win there would send them out to San Diego to take on Alabama. Eighth ever NCAA bid for the Scarlet Knights. Second year in a row that Rutgers has made it. Crystal Rich getting the reaction in Piscataway. You know, just real thankful. We had uh, one of those seasons where we didn't start off great, but we just got better and better. And I'm really glad the committee 
rewarded us. Uh, we had some great wins. This team just continues to get better, and um, I really like, uh, you know, the way we're going into this tournament and just very thankful. We had a huge room full of people. It was exciting here, and, uh, you know, the Big Ten's great, and I'm wishing all the coaches a lot of luck. What do you believe the selection committee saw out of the Scarlet Knights this season? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know how many is the final tally in our league, but, you know, we beat one through ten in this conference, and it's the best conference in the country. It's the best coached with the best players. Um, and when you do those kind of things and finish fourth in a league like this, you get an opportunity to play, you know, March Madness. And just real thankful we got that opportunity. And uh, we're going to play, obviously, a great Notre Dame team. Uh, and we're looking forward to it. I'm excited. I'm relieved. And, oh, just a lot of relief. It was a lot of tension in the room. It was a lot of nervous faces. But we heard our name called, and that's what matters. Yeah, listen, after that loss to Iowa, you said you believed that Rutgers deserves to be in the NCAA tournament. The selection committee agreed with you. Why do you think that was? Uh, I think we're a really unique team. I think we got better as the season went on, which is always a sign of a good team. And we have a lot of good wins. You know, we hit a couple bumps in the road, as good teams do, but we always bounce back. So that's why I feel like it was important for us to get this opportunity, and we just had to get our foot in the door. Unique is an overused word. It's often inappropriately used. It means one of a kind. I would say Ron Harper Jr. used it completely accurately there because this really was a -a one-of-a-kind resume from Rutgers. It included those six quad one wins, some very unusual losses as well. But this is a team, Ray Fell, we've been talking about. Show me who you are at your best. Who they were at their best was clearly a team deserving of playing in the NCAA tournament. They were extremely good, and I know... Ron Harper Jr. has got to be feeling good playing another Indiana team. He's already hit two buzzer beaters against Indiana team, sent them packing. But I'm looking at that first matchup against Notre Dame, and I'll say it again. Blake Wesley can score the ball, 24 points against Illinois. He can put the ball in the basket. Caleb McConnell will have to have his hard hat on and lock in defensively. They're going to have to make shots from the perimeter to get past that first game. They get into that next game. They're still, they travel with their defense. You are, they're always going to have a chance. But then Paul Mulcahy. He, has, he had a few bad games, had a great one in the Big Ten tournament. Look for him to continue it. Second straight year they've made it. First time since 1975 and 76 they've made it in consecutive seasons. What do you make of Michigan? Well, I like this Michigan team. They've, they've almost gone win-loss, win-loss for about six weeks now, so they're due for a win. All right, Colorado <laughs> State's not going to be an easy one. Their guard play, Isaiah Stevens, David Roddy, really good guard play uh, for Colorado State. So Eli Brooks, Devontae Jones are going to have their hands full. they got to play through the big fella. Hunter Dickinson is an All-American caliber player. they got to play through him. If their young players are hitting shots, especially Caleb Houston, that takes his team to another level. I like their potential in this tournament. David Roddy's really a sensational player, native of Minnesota, has done a great job out of Colorado State. Only Gonzaga's won more NCAA tournament games than Michigan since 2013. And finally, Ray Fell, the Hoosiers do get in, barely, but they're in. TJD was not going to let Indiana miss the tournament again. Averaged 25, 8, and 2.5 and blocks in the Big Ten tournament. He was, out, he was outstanding, taking it at whatever big was guarding him. This is all about Indiana. Doesn't matter who they play. They play defense. TJD plays that way. They can win some games. Great to see Indiana back in the NCAA tournament. 40th time. That is the most of any school in the Big Ten. This is the... Back here in Indianapolis, nine Big Ten teams are in. Andy, Robbie, Mike, and Mike here. No other conference had more than six, mind you. When you guys saw the bracket, what were your initial first thoughts? Well, my initial thought was Michigan State playing against Davidson. First of all, Davidson's a wonderful basketball team. Second of all, Davidson's point guard is Foster Lawyer, (laughs) who played for Michigan State, who was a superstar in high school basketball in the state of Michigan. Uh, Wonderful. He's having a wonderful season, averaging nearly 17 points in a game, as well as making the second team All-Atlantic 10. But he did miss the game-winning shot for the uh, Davidson Wildcats today that could have gotten the Atlantic 10 title. I think my, my biggest takeaway is, first of all, the, the nine Big Ten teams, terrific for the league, but then just how close Rutgers and Indiana were to maybe not making the NCAA tournament. Ter- they needed every win they could get, <laughs> and, they, and they got them. It was a terrific weekend here in Indianapolis, but Indianapolis was really important for those two teams. Yeah, there's no question. First off, I think Rutgers getting the double by the fact that their loss was to Iowa and not a team like Nebraska or Northwestern or something like that, I think actually kind of helped and, and protected them. Same with Indiana getting the wins here. Uh, for me, the nine is deserving. that You earn it in the regular season. It's not about what you did historically. It's about what you did. So they earned it. But I actually think 
that Indiana and Rutgers, being in the first four, I kind of like their matchups. I think they will benefit by playing a game so soon after their losses this week. And the thing to remember about the first four is every year there's a team that makes a run to the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight from that first four. It's happened almost every single year. Perhaps it'll be one of those two teams. More from us in a bit, but for now, back to you. Well, I think we need to hand out some congratulations to Mike DeCourcy, guys. How about his bracket? He got 67 of the 68 correct. On top of that, of all the major bracketologists, he got the most seedings correct as well. So oh, man, we've, Mike. Been, we've been leaning on Mike's bracketology. Wow. There's a reason. The, the man knows what he's doing. Interested to get some final thoughts from you guys. Who got the toughest draw? Ohio State. I mentioned Loyola is really tough. They, they managed to get by Loyola. They got Villanova. That's not a, a welcome sight for, for uh, the Buckeyes. I think they have a really tough draw, and they're not healthy either. And I'm going Michigan State. Foster Lawyer, the point guard. Tyson Walker's ankle is still bummed right now. That's got to be a great matchup. But Coach K in that next round, that would be tough. Let's accentuate the positive. Who got the best draw? Who's feeling the best about how this whole thing played out for them? Bucky Badger. Johnny Davis, I think he's ready to explode in this tournament. They're playing in Milwaukee. And then if they get to the Sweet 16, they're playing in Chicago. They got to love that, how, they, how it lays out for them. And I'm going Purdue. I'm looking far ahead to the matchup to Kentucky. I think the two bigs Purdue has, they can wear down Oscar Tashibwe, and they can get that win. But I think Purdue has the best draw. Okay, here's what I want to ask you guys to do. I need you to take off your allegiance hats, right? Okay. You cannot okay. answer Illinois. Okay. You cannot answer Purdue. Aside from that, who do you envision making the deepest run in the Big Iowa. Game? Iowa, no question. I love how they're playing. I love the star power they have. They, they play on their terms. They make teams play to their style. I, I love how they're playing. I need no notes for this. I'm going Iowa as well. <laughs> they have the best player in the country. They have other guys who have merged, can score the ball. They're playing defense at a high level. Tony Perkins brings a toughness. Patrick McCaffrey brings another score. They don't turn the ball over. And they are 21-0 when they out-rebound opponents. That's I like the key this Iowa That's team. The key what an rebound. unbelievable story it would be. You lose the National Player of the Year from a year ago. Of course, you may have the National Player of the Year this year as well. Man, he's, uh, he's unbelievable. Hey.